the introduction first. So a warm hello to friends on Zoom and YouTube who have just entered the session for our talk happening shortly. Please take your time to settle in and perhaps go get a drink as you listen to our talk over the next one and a half hours. This talk, Healthy Loss and Healthy Aging, Hearing Loss and Healthy Aging, excuse me, is organized by Sage Counseling Center. And our guest speakers for tonight, Ms. Chu Yen Li from the National University of uh, National University Hospital of Singapore. For friends who are joining us for the first time, this webinar is one in a series that we organize throughout the year. This is part of our public education program and topics covered in the past, including sleep health or depression in the elderly. We cover topics that are relevant to seniors to enhance their total well-being. So do follow us on Facebook for updates on our next and future talks. So 对于那些第一次参加讲座的线上朋友欢迎你们线上讲座的主题都是跟年长者有关的你们都可以到我们的念书 就是我们的Facebook Sage Counseling Center的Facebook 来关注我们以获取更多的信息让我们能够更新 
Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. A big thank you for ev to everyone for joining us tonight to listen to tonight's webinar organized by Sage Counseling Center. I hope everyone had a good dinner and are ready for the talk. Uh,各位晚上好。今天的讲座呢,是以双语,所以我们会有华语,啊,英语,然后接下来就是华语。我们非常感谢大家今天晚上能够参加乐林辅导中心所主办的讲座。我们希望各位都吃饱啦,然后
and below. We provide repairs such as fix, fixing light bulbs, leaky taps, and more. We also periodically organize programs such as activities, such as arts, music, and cultural programs, such as the Reminiscent Walk. 接下来呢，如果年长者家中有灯的坏的灯泡，或是水龙头漏漏水等，呃，乐林辅导中心有提供这个家居维修服务，是免费提供一些非常基本的居家维修，包括电工及水管工等项目。然后我们的这个居家维
，艳丽呢就在新加坡国立大学医院入职，服务听力学家的工作。至今，朱小姐已经任职了五年，她接触了非常多的年长者病患。她作为一名专门从事老年。啊，听力康复以及社区外展的听力学家，他非常的热衷为社区年长者来提供听力服务的项目。是一九啊二是，对不起，自二零幺九年以来，啊、嗯，朱小姐呢，她附属于新加坡听力学啊专业人士协会 S A P S， 是该协会的活跃会员。So, uh, Miss Chu Yen Li, over to you. All right. Uh, let me share the screen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Can everyone see the screen? 大家可以看到那个 slides 吗？ Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. All right. Ah, uh, so good evening, everyone. Thank you for your participation in this talk today. I'm going to take you through the idea of healthy aging and some of the hearing related topics. So healthy aging is a concept with which、uh, we are all likely familiar, and we would recognize it when we see it. So we can look around us and see older adults who lead very active lifestyle. And as they age, they remain socially engaged with family and friends. And in contrast, there are people with mobility impairments or dementia living in nursing homes, which would not be considered as ideal healthy aging. And this leads all of us to the questions of、uh, whether hearing loss has a meaningful impact on the broader outcomes related to healthy aging. 嗯、um, ，大家下午好，谢谢大家参与这次的讲座。那么今天呢，我就会带大家去更加了解什么是健康老龄化，还有一些关于听力的知识。So for the purpose of today's talk, we will focus on first understand hearing loss, second ways to manage hearing loss, third. Communication strategies for people with hearing loss, and fourth, the prevention tips. So, first one, understand hearing loss, 就了解什么什么是听力损失 So, how do we hear? 我们怎么听 Our ear consists of three parts. We have outer ear, we have middle ear, and inner ear. So, looking. At the ear illustration at the center, the outer ear includes pinna and auditory canal. The pinna collects the sound like a funnel and transmits it through the ear canal to the ear drum. And here we comes to the middle ear. So the middle ear made up of ear drum and has three tiny small tiny bones. So the sound from the outer ear causes the eardrum to vibrate, and these three small bones amplify the sound, the vibration, and send them to the inner ear. And this is when the vibration hit the cochlea, which is look like a snail shape, ah,、uh, cochlea. Then this cochlea line with the hair cells and is filled with fluid. So the movement of the fluid triggers the hair cells to move, and the hair cells then change into electrical signals. And these electrical signals are sent through the nerve to the brain, where they are interpreted as sound that we recognize and understand. So, how does one being diagnosed with hearing loss? First and foremost, the person needs to undergo a hearing test. 那么一个人啊，要怎么知道自己有没有听力问题？他首先就需要去检查听力。那么首先啊，这个病人呢就会到
听力部门去做应该做的那个程序。So a complete history, ear, nose, and throat examination, and relevant investigations are necessary for diagnosis. And if necessary, an endoscopic examination of the nose and the nasopharynx may also be involved. Then, the ENT doctor will perform a thorough head and neck examination, particularly the ear canal and the eardrum. Then, after that, a hearing test, which we also call pure tone audiometry, will be performed to confirm the hearing level and indicate the severity and type of hearing loss. Also, we will involve a middle ear test, which will determine the middle ear function. So, this whole process is from seeing the patient. After seeing the patient, the patient will be sent to the hearing doctor, which is like me, a professional doctor, to do a hearing test. So, they will check your hearing, your ear, and also check your ear. So, types of hearing loss. We have different types of hearing loss. We have different types of hearing loss. Include sensory neural hearing loss, mixed hearing loss, and conductive hearing loss. So let's take a look on the different types of hearing loss. What is conductive hearing loss? So it is a problem, hearing problem, caused by physical damage or presence of obstruction along the outer and the middle ear. So we can see here where there is a there are two crosses here, which means sound are unable to enter all the way from the outer ear and middle ear to the inner ear. And probably you may simulate this by simply putting your fingers into your ears. So this may sound like a conductive hearing loss, just a simulation. So the most common causes of conductive hearing loss are um, impacted earwax, or fluid behind middle ear, or it can be physical damage to the eardrum, which causes uh, the eardrum to be perforated. So the sound may be blocked by earwax or foreign object in the ear canal. So sometimes we do see cotton bud in the ears or even insects. So or it could be middle ear may be filled with fluid or ear infection or any abnormal bone growth. So um, this conductive hearing loss can usually be treated medically or surgically, depending on the case. And in cases where the medical doctor cannot fully address the hearing loss, hearing aids may be recommended. So, this is a conductive hearing loss. It is a conductive hearing loss. 到耳道导致声音无法传达到你的内耳，就变成了一种听力损失。那么它有很多种原因，其中几种呢就有包括，嗯，耳耳屎塞满，或者呢，耳膜后面有积水，又或者是耳膜或者你们称为耳膜破洞，导致说声音无法啊完完全全的传达到你的大脑。那么这种状况呢，通常可以被治疗，可以是啊、呃、通过药物或者是啊、呃、手术，那么是看各个的情况。那么通常如果这个状况医生解决不了，医生可能觉得说没有办法用通过药物或者是手术来解决，那么就需要带助听器来帮助你们听得更好喽。So now we are looking at the types of eardrum. If you were to see the pictures over here, are shown different types of eardrum. First of all, let's take a look at the top row. So the left top row, the picture is showing normal eardrum. So you can see the normal eardrum is very translucent, shiny, and intact. Where you can see here, there is a light reflection. And when we see on the right side, that's an ear infection. So you can see the eardrum is bulging and it is dull and no light reflection. So we take a look at the second row now. 
The one on the left that I am pointing here, this is eardrum perforation. So you can see a big hole at the lower part of the eardrum. And this could be due to ear infection or something, some metal cotton bud hit the eardrum, which caused the uh, perforation, the hole. And the next one, this is a small perforation. And if we look at the last row, this is a scarring, which can be due to the scar tissue occurs after the healing of the perforated eardrum. And also I uh, included the uh, swelling of ear canal. This is what we call infection in the ear canal or swimmer's ear. So in this case, we can see many different bacteria. So I'm just showing the healthy bacteria. You can see the light, 它是透明的耳棒啊还是铁类似铁的挖耳朵的那个用具导致这个耳膜破洞 啊, 通常会比较常游泳的，就会有这个情况呢，就是他的耳道呢就发炎，导致的一种现象。嗯， so ah, uh, conductive hearing loss is sometimes accompanied by pain or discomfort or the feeling that something is wrong in the ear. So other common signs of conductive hearing loss can include speech muffled speech or pain discharge in the ear or a feeling of fullness in the ear. So sensory neural hearing loss. So unlike conductive hearing loss, there are no physical damages or obstructions on the external ear or middle ear, but rather the hearing the problem lies in the hearing receptors themselves. This is the most common type of hearing loss, and it is caused by the deterioration of our hearing receptors or the hair cells in the inner ear. So as we can see from the picture on the right, sound can travel through the ear canal, but when it reaches the inner ear, it stops there, with meaning this inner ear something wrong with the inner ear. So the most common causes of this sensory neural hearing loss are aging, long-term exposure to loud sound, viral infection, or autotoxic drugs, which are some of the chemotherapy drugs. But no matter what, it is important to take these drugs as they are useful for your medical condition. These types of hearing loss cannot be addressed medically or surgically. The most common treatment is the usage of hearing aids. So the onset of this sensory neural hearing loss can be gradual or it can be sudden. And one important note on this sudden hearing loss is that uh, sudden hearing losses can occur in any individuals and require immediate medical attention. You can wake up one day and notice that you just do not hear from one side. 
or you can be walking into the mall and suddenly lose your hearing. Should this happen, it is crucial to consult a physician right away to preserve long-term hearing health. So as we can see here, the hair cells in the inner ear play important role in hearing. So the picture on the left row over here shows healthy hair cells. You can see the hair cells are neatly arranged in rows and they are turgid and they are intact. Whereas on the right row shows the opposite. It shows damaged hair cells. This is what happened in sensory neural hearing loss. So the hair cells become damaged or sparse or messy, a bit like an old toothbrush that has been used for many, many years. So this kind of damage is a permanent damage, which is why it is important to take good care of your hearing. The signs of sensory neural hearing loss can have these six, but not limited to these six. So for example, difficulty, oh, sorry, difficulty following group conversations, especially when there's background noise. Troubleshooting, trouble understanding speech in noisy surroundings. Difficulty understand phone conversation. The sound seems unclear or people sound like they are mumbling. Difficulty hearing high pitch sounds or ringing or buzzing in the ears, which we call tinnitus. So press by QCs. So this is what we call age-related hearing loss. It is the most common type of hearing loss in elderly. It is caused by natural aging of the auditory system, inner ear, and or, or hearing nerve. This is a gradual loss of hearing in both ears over time. It affects the ability to hear high-pitched sounds like phone ringing or beeping of a microwave. The ability to hear low-pitched sound is usually not affected and because of the gradual change in hearing, some people are not aware of the change at first. So now let's take a look at the picture on the right. This is an audiogram. An audiogram is basically a hearing test report. So the numbers showing a long horizontal area at the top row is frequency, which in layman term is pitch. So 125 hertz is the low pitch, like water dropping sound, and 8,000 hertz is the high pitch, like bird chirping sound. So as you go across the top row, Frequency increases, pitch becomes higher pitch. Whereas the numbers on the vertical axis here represents loudness. As we come down the graph, the sound becomes louder and louder. So if a person has high frequency hearing loss, it means that the person is going to miss out high frequency sounds like bird chirping sound. Some of the elderly will say that, oh, I can hear sound, but I cannot understand what they are talking about. This is because consonant of speech plays very important role in speech clarity. So consonant involves like p, k, s, all this sound. Some of the high frequency consonants are k, k, f, f, s, s, and t. For instance, for example, you might hear someone say three or three, and it may not be clear to you, and you are not sure which one they are saying. Or your family member could be saying, could you pass me the fish? But then you might hear it as, could you pass me the dish? Which lead you to ask your family member which dish they are referring to as there are different dishes on the table. So these are some of the uh, daily life examples that we have from our patients that they share, oh, they have hearing loss and it troubles them. It brings trouble to them. And next one is one of the examples of sensory neural hearing loss, which is noise-induced hearing loss. 
This is an excessive long-term exposure to louder than normal sounds. So typically sounds over 85 decibel. It, is, it can be caused by uh, recreational, occupational, or others. So recreational can be loud music, concerts, or headphone use. And occupational wise, it can be working in a factory, industrial noise, working on a construction site without hearing protection. And others can be intense, loud noise, uh, like firecracker or explosion. And the extent to this damage and the speed of the onset is dependent on the length of exposure, the sound level, and the distance, how close is the uh, sound exposure, the level of hearing protection being worn. Then it is recommended that workers in noisy environments of 85 decibel limit their exposure to eight hours a day. So this is the graph that actually shows how loud a sound that causes permanent damage. If you look at the line where there's a red circle over here, it says that you should not expose to noise of 85 decibel for more than eight hours. So when the noise increases by three decibel, it's 88 decibel, the amount of time exposure should be half. That should be four hours. So subsequently, as you go another three decibel higher at 91 decibel, the time is half again to two hours. So sounds like gunshot, uh, jet taking off. It's very intense sound at 120 decibel. Just a few seconds is enough to cause permanent damage to your hearing. But sound from vacuum cleaner or washing machine in daily life is still okay. Then this leads to us like, how loud is too loud? Some rules of thumb to tell if the sounds around you are too loud. First, you find your spell, yourself speaking loudly or shouting so people uh, one meter away can hear you. Or you can't hear the person next to you, talking to you. And speech sounds muffled or dull after you leave the noisy place. And the noise hurts your ears. Or you are experiencing tinnitus, ringing sound in the ear during the noise or after the noise goes away. And here we are looking at tinnitus. So it is actually a perception of sound that is heard when there are no corresponding external sound is present. So meaning when there's no sound, you still can hear something in the ear. This is what we call tinnitus. It can be ringing, humming, buzzing, hissing, or clicking. And it may result from uh, the damage to inner ear and hearing nerve. It can be due to the wax is blocked, impacted wax in the canal. It can be due to eardrum perforation or it can be due to tumor. So this tinnitus management involves sound therapy, hearing aids, and counseling. So after patient is, has been seen by the ENT doctor, patient will be referred to the audiologist who is specialized in this area for tinnitus management. So we will take a look at what the patient is experiencing, what kind of tinnitus, and the cause of the tinnitus we will provide appropriate management on case-by-case -case basis. So it's not just a one-time appointment, but rather it may be a series of appointments until you kind of adapt to the tinnitus. Because sometimes these tinnitus, there are no uh, cure to that. So the last resort will be to live with it and adapt to it. And lastly, these are the last type of hearing loss, which is mixed hearing loss, combining both conductive and sensory neural hearing loss leads to the third type. So in this type of hearing loss, there are elements of the physical damage or obstruction to the outer ear uh, and in combination with a deterioration of the hair cells found in the inner ear. So a doctor will treat the conductive part 
of the hearing loss and may prescribe hearing aids once uh, the medical concern is cleared. So as we can see here, all parts are crossed out, meaning sound cannot go through the ears. And when we have hearing loss and it goes untreated, these are all the consequences of hearing loss. So it leads to communication difficulties and it can also lead to fatigue, uh, tension and stress, which reduce the job performance. So some people, they will start to isolate themselves and withdraw from social activities because they cannot communicate with their partners or their friends. And eventually, this will have an impact on their relationship with family members and friends. So this leads to withdrawal from the loved ones. And some people may even experience irritability and anger because they feel others cannot understand them truly. And in the long run, this will lead to diminished overall health, maybe impact memory and social re rejection or uh, reduced alertness. So it is a well-known fact that as we get older, we tend to experience some level of decline in our cognitive ability. For some of us, it may be mild and for some, may be serious. So although a normal part of aging, typical issues tend to pop up, like forgetting details, taking longer to learn new things, and difficulty concentrating or focusing. So we might not be able to stop it, but uh, recent studies tell us we may be able to slow it down. So uh, here comes to uh, the when we are discussing about relationship between hearing loss and cognitive decline. So many studies actually reported that, oh, older people with hearing loss are more likely to develop Alzheimer's disease or dementia. And hearing loss can be associated with a faster rate of cognitive decline. Why is this so? So one has to do with the cognitive load. With untreated hearing loss, the brain gets overworked by constantly straining to understand speech and sound. So an overworked brain does not work efficiently. And another has to do with brain structure. So brain cells can shrink from lack of stimulus, stimulation, including the parts of the brain that receive and process sound. And the last theory is social isolation. When a person has trouble, trouble hearing conversations and socializing, they may prefer staying at home instead. However, the more isolated a person becomes, the less stimuli their brain receives. And we experts also say that one of the most important things we can do to keep our brains healthy as we age is to stay mentally stimulated. Keeping up an active social life with our friends, family, and maybe our business associates is one of the many ways to be mentally engaged. So, and we can actually encourage this through good hearing health, including the use of hearing aids for those with hearing loss. So studies shows that the proper use of hearing aids can lower your hearing risk factor of dementia. And in fact, the researchers concluded that the key wasn't simply the ability to hear better, but more importantly, how better hearing allowed them to stay involved in everyday life. So uh, this study by Amelia et al., the researchers revealed that people with hearing loss who did not use hearing aids had a higher risk of dementia and depression. However, people with hearing loss who use hearing aids experience cognitive decline. But by restoring the ability to better communicate, hearing aids can help improve social interactions and provide the opportunity to participate in brain-stimulating activities that can help slow the cognitive decline.
And here we comes to how to manage the hearing loss. 那么接下来我们就会再探讨怎么去嗯嗯 man 怎么去解决这个听力问题。So, ah,、uh, hearing aids, as ah、uh, all of us know, is an electronic device that amplifies sound to an audible level. So as you can see at the picture on the right, so hearing aid consists of microphone, amplifier, speaker, and it needs battery to be operated. So right now we have ah、uh, this ah、uh, non rechargeable hearing aids, or maybe some of you may have heard the rechargeable hearing aids. So how does a hearing aid work? So the sound is carried diff in across different components. So the microphone pick up the sound wave and converts them to be amplified. So this amplifier increase the strength and send them via the speaker into the ear. So the amount of amplification prescribed is based on hearing test results. And now, before we move further into understanding more about hearing aids, I would like to understand how everyone here. Understand hearing aids, and it's our quiz time now. So the first question: Do hearing aids restore hearing to normal? A. Yes. B. No. Choose one answer. 那么现在呢？我需要大家，我需要了解大家对这个助听器的认知。那么首先第一题，助听器。能否让听力恢复正常 ？A. 是的。B. 不是。那么我们就有大概一分钟，让大家啊。OK， 好了，那么我这里呢就看到有四十四八仙，大家四十四八仙的你们讲说是助听器能让听力恢复正常，那么其余比较大数的人呢都是讲说五十六啊，就是五十六八仙的你们就说助听器不能让听力恢复正常，那么我们现在就来揭晓答案。Okay, so, yeah, okay, oh, okay. So, 那个答案是不能 So, hearing aids cannot restore hearing to normal, and in fact, ah,、uh, they only amplify sound to help you hear better. 那么助听器呢，不能不能让你的听力恢复正常，它们只能帮助你。把声音放大，让你听得比较清楚。So when you have hearing loss, most of the time it's a permanent damage, ah,、uh, due to the nerve damage. And hearing aids cannot restore the nerve function. All it does, ah,、uh, is to make sound louder for you to hear better and clearer. 那么我们的听力损失大多数呢，都是因为，啊，嗯。听，因为我们老化导致呢内耳神经线衰退的问题，那么这个助听器呢就没有办法让你的神经线回到恢复正常，所以助听器呢就只是帮你把声音放大，让你听得比较好，比较清楚。那么接下来我们还有第二个问题 ，We are going into the second question. Hearing aids are only for the elderly. A true, B false. 助听器只适合老年人。A 正确 ，B 不正确
，哎，看来大家都都完成了，哎，还没有，还有一些哦。OK， 好，那么九十九八千的人都回答正确，就是助听器不只是不只是啊、呃、给老人的。So hearing aids are not only for the elderly. Everyone's here. Almost all of us are here. Are, are answered correctly. Hmm. All right. So yeah, hearing aids are not just for the elderly, and in fact, hearing aids are for everyone or anyone with hearing loss, regardless of their age. So hearing loss can occur due to various reasons, a lot of reasons across all stages of life. Even baby or young children can have hearing loss and may benefit from hearing aids. So people of all ages should therefore regularly have their hearing checked and monitored. And we have the next question. Hearing aids are noisy. A. Yes, I have heard from others. Uh, that, that hearing aids are noisy. B, I'm wearing hearing aids or I have worn hearing aids before and I find them noisy. C, not sure as I have not tried them. Choose one answer. Okay, the poll has ended. So we have equal voting of A. Yes, I've heard from others that hearing aids are noisy. And C, not sure as I've not tried them. So these are the most common misconception that when patient came to our clinic, then they will say, oh, the hearing aids are loud. I heard from my friends that the sounds are loud, the amplification is loud. So 很很多时间，大多数啊、呃，病人来到我们的诊所，他们就会讲说，助听器是是不是很大声，会不会影响我的听力？为什么我听很多人讲说，哦，助听器很吵？那么今天呢，就由我来啊、呃，向大家解开这个谜底。So the fact is that. Uh, you need some time to adapt to the sounds that you have been missing for a long time. This is called the acclimatization phase. So wearing hearing aids regularly for at least six hours every day will help the brain to relearn the sounds. So there are some people who say that hearing aids are noisy. It's because that these people have been missing uh, the sounds for some time. For example, footsteps, plastic bag rustling, or even the air conditioner humming or the wind noise. So the moment you put on hearing aids, these sounds are going to be heard by you again. So it takes time to get used to the sound and it is why uh, it's important to wear hearing aids regularly to retrain your brain to relearn what these sounds are. Moreover, uh, the hearing aids now, uh, it's uh, can boost the speech sounds and suppress the less desirable sounds. And with the evolution of the technology now, you, uh, you are allowed to choose the setting through your phone. And some features include noise reduction and controlling the directionality of the microphones to best perform in noisy situations. But all in all, uh, the hearing aids along with some communication strategies provided by the audiologists will help you perform best uh, in the most complex environment. So it's a matter of adaptation, I would say, for you to adapt to the hearing aids or to the amplification. 
So in fact, hearing aids are not noisy. It's the environmental sound that is that have the noises that you have been long missing the sound. So when you put on the hearing aids, what you hear is what the normal hearing people hear. And here we come to the fourth question. Hearing aids can wait until you really need them. True or false? 助听器可以等到您真正需要的时候才购买。正确还是不正确? Okay, the poll has ended. So majority of everyone here, 61% answered true. Hearing aids can wait until you really need them and 39% uh, answered false. So let me explain. Okay, so in fact, uh, we should not wait there is no time to waste when it comes to your hearing. In most cases, hearing loss is gradual, which means it could be a while before you realize you have a hearing problem. So over time, the part of your brain that helps to recognize some sounds will stop doing so. So as with every, like most things related to brain function, it needs exercise. Hearing aids will provide the stimulation your brain needs to keep identifying these sounds. As with everything, the longer you wait, the harder it is to retrain your brain. So when you feel that, oh, there is something wrong with your hearing, then you might need to get your hearing tested and the audiologist will uh, tell you whether or not you need a hearing aid. And the la here we come to the last questions of the day. Question five. Hearing aids purchased online will just be as good. A, I agree. B, I disagree. Choose one answer. All right, so most of us disagree that hearing it purchased online will be just as good. Yes, yeah. So, hmm. on. Yep. so in fact, tailored hearing aids from a qualified audiologist are a better investment for your hearing health the shape of your ears, hearing test results, and communication needs are completely unique to you. And a fully qualified audiologist like myself have years of experience and knowledge under my expertise, under their expertise, to provide exclusive hearing solutions to you. So after a diagnostic hearing test is performed, the audiologist will go through a detailed discussion about the styles and the models available in the market to suit your lifestyle. And at this stage, 
the measurements of your ears will be taken for the devices to fit you best. And then you will get a hearing aid fitting, which will include learning how to care and how to manage these devices. And subsequently, there will be a follow-up appointment or appointments to further adjust, troubleshoot, or service your devices. And on average, a pair of hearing aids should last you four to five years. You will need professional servicing and maintenance to make sure they work optimally during this time period. And uh, these services will be catered to your individual needs by audiologists and will be worth far more than any offer you might find online because these services and these hearing aids are unique only to you. And here we come to the most popular comparison. Everyone is comparing hearing aids versus hearing amplifier. 那么接下来我们就来探讨助听器和扩音器的差别。so hearing aids are not cheap and it is understandable that uh, um, why some people consider hearing amplifiers. And although amplifiers are advertised as like uh, one size or one device fits all solution to hearing loss, they cannot support that claim in, uh, in, actual, fact, in actual fact. And like what I mentioned before, your hearing loss is as unique as your fingerprint. So you need a solution that meets your exact hearing needs. And despite both of these devices serving similar purposes, the hearing amplifiers and hearing aids are two very different things. And let's go through what sets these devices apart from one another. And we will focus on hearing aid first. Here are the key differences. Uh, hearing aid amplifies sounds based on individuals' hearing test results. The soft, moderate, and loud sounds are ampli amplified appropriately. So it requires a prescription from an audiologist, and the prescription will be uniquely yours alone, uh, just the same as any other medical device. And this hearing aid is able to identify and focus on specific sounds like voices and conversations while filtering out background noise as they have the noise reduction or noise filtering feature. Whereas the hearing amplifier, it amplifies all sounds regardless of frequency or volume. And it does not require a prescription or even may be purchased directly off the shelf. And because of the price also, it does not have any noise reduction, noise filtering feature. And in fact, it's not ideal as improper use might even worsen a person's hearing. So amplifier will just amplify all sounds uh, in the environment to be louder. It won't make them clearer. So understanding speech requires a balance between specific frequencies or pitch. When used to treat hearing loss, hearing amplifiers can do more harm than good. Hearing amplifiers are designed for people with normal hearing, actually. So it's, if your hearing is normal, it's okay. You might benefit from using an ampl amplifier in challenging settings. So for example, people with normal hearing might uh, use an amplifier for activities like bird watching. You can think of amplifiers as binoculars for your ears. So they zoom in on what you can hear already so you can appreciate a bit more. But for someone with hearing loss, simply amplifying all sounds can actually further cause further damage. Okay, so these are the hearing aid styles. We have from the smallest to the biggest. Let's take a look at them. So let's take a look at the leftmost, which is invisible in the canal. This is the smaller case. You cannot see from here. It fits mild to severe hearing loss. It fits deep within the ear canal. Then we have completely in the canal. It fits mild to profound hearing loss, almost all the hearing losses level. Fits inside the ear, you can see a bit here, making 
it also kind of invisible. Lah. Then we have this in the ear and in the, in the canal and in the ear hearing aids. So this hearing aids fits, fits all level of hear, all level of hearing. It customized according to the ear structure. The size of the hearing aids depends on the built-in feature or the shape of the patient's ear. And it fits in the ear canal, is partially visible, as we can see from the picture here. Then we have receiver in the canal. So this is the most popular hearing aids as of now. So it's small case that sits behind the ear, making it rather invisible. So over here, we cannot see also, but from the back, we might be able to uh, recognize uh, the person is wearing hearing aids. Uh. So basically the microphone at the back and pick up the sound, transmit the sound into the ear where the speaker sits inside. So receiver in layman term is the speaker. Yeah. And we have here behind the ear hearing aids. So it's, it's usually for um, patients or users with hearing loss ranging from mild to profound. It has larger case, easier for patient with vision issue or dexterity concern. And it sits behind the ear just like that. And lastly, we have this superpower hearing aids. It is the a more powerful hearing aids that provide a greater solution to uh to provide greatest level of amplification. Lah. So it is designed for those who have very severe to profound hearing loss. So as we can see here also, what I'm trying to say is that the smaller the hearing aids, the less powerful they are. So if you were to have a severe degree of hearing loss, wearing small hearing aid is not going to help you. It will just act as an earplug and you're not going to hear anything clearly. Okay, apart from hearing aids, we also have assistive listening devices or assistive listening system. So in Mandarin, we call that fu zu ting qi zhuang zhi. So this one is not hearing aids. So um, uh, which helps a hearing loss, a person with hearing loss communicate more effectively through direct sound amplification or visual or maybe vibrotactile alerts. So we can see here the amplified and caption telephone. So these are specifically designed for people with hearing loss allowing uh, the hearing loss, the uh, hearing impact people to turn up the volume as necessary to hear speech clearly. So you do not need to wear hearing aids to uh, benefit from these devices. They can make it easier to hear high-pitched sounds, uh, which many people with hearing loss struggle to hear. So these phones sometimes also amplify ringtones, which is higher in pitch, so you will never miss a call. So for those with caption telephone, so this captioning is a real-time captioning, which are particularly helpful for people with severe to profound hearing loss. So when the party over the phone, when they say something, it will uh, the phone will show the real-time caption like subtitles. Mm. So then we can focus on the next, which is the vibrating watch. This is rather new to the market where it's a wearable wrist devices. So it will provide the vibration to let someone who have uh, hearing loss know that, oh, there is sound in your environment that you are not normal, normally capable of hearing. Yeah, And not sure if everyone noticed when you are in theatre or when you are in cinema, we will see this sign with a T. So T stands for telecall. And this is a hearing loop, actually. So uh, this is what we call assistive listening system, which is a system technology that useful in public settings such as theater, airport, or maybe church or lecture hall. So this hearing loops, uh, it works by uh, connecting a, a special loop to a public sound system. So the sound is wirelessly transmitted through the magnetic field and it is directed into the telecall of the hearing aids or cochlear implants or a receiver worn on the body like a neck loop. Yeah, 
So this will help those who are in public, those hearing uh, impaired person who wear hearing aids in the public, then they can hear the sound from maybe in front uh, clearer by having these hearing loops. And then we have this FM system, which is uh, in uh, original term, which is frequency mod modulated system. So this system, uh, it uses radio uh, signals to transmit sounds from a microphone and then uh, typically worn by a speaker. So a speaker is uh, holding the microphone and the receiver is worn by the person with hearing loss. So this system, FN system, is uh, more popular or widely used in schools to help children with hearing loss to achieve their educational goals. But they are also helpful for adults in many situations, but this FN system uh, should uh, be, you should consult the audiologist for further advice. Lah. So far uh, for assistive listening devices, none of the hospital in Singapore are selling them. So you may look it uh, online, but we do have this FM system, but this one need to uh, consult audiologist first, then we will see if hearing aids can help or you need this FM system. So then it comes to a uh, questions. Oh, yeah. So now, now let's take a break. Let's watch this video. Can you pause it? Oh, <laughs> So, Thank 
listening. All right. So after watching the videos, then everyone might have a question. When do I need hearing aids? So uh, let's take a look at uh, some of the, these questions to get an indication. So do, first, do people around you seem to mumble? Or do you find it hard to hear in environments with a lot of background noise? Or do you need to look closely at a person, especially their lips, to follow a conversation with them? Um, do you need to turn up the TV volume or the radio volume? And do you find it hard to listen to phone calls, especially? Or the most common, do your family members or friends ever say that they have to repeat things to you? If you have answered yes to some of these questions, it's time to get your hearing tested. In the best outcome, your audiologist will confirm that your hearing is fine. However, if this is not the case, you should take action as soon as possible. The fewer sounds that the ear uh, receive uh, relays to the brain, the more hearing capacity the brain will lose. So if your audiologist confirms a hearing loss, take your time and let them advise you about all the possible solutions open to you. So there are some ways that you can get your hearing tested. So it's how to make appointment for hearing tests. This is the most common, the next questions. So we have two routes, subsidized route or the private route. So by subsidized route, meaning you have to go polyclinic to get a referral to the ear, nose, throat department in any of the government hospital. Then the doctors will provide appropriate uh, medical or surgical treatment if necessary. And the audiologist will conduct hearing tests and provide the management. Or if you prefer a faster route, which is the private route, because there's a, of, of course, there is some wait time in government hospital. So private route will be to direct walk in to the ear, nose, throat department in any of the government hospital. Or you may visit private hearing aid clinics. Then you can get your hearing test uh, immediately. And that I also include that uh, how to identify those who may need to seek medical treatment for ear-related issue. So some of the common questions for medical referral will be, do you have blocked sensation in the ear? Do you feel ear pain? Do you have uh, discharge, foul smelling discharge, yellowish green fluid coming out from the ear? Or do you have sudden hearing loss? So the advice would be to visit polyclinic and get a referral to the ENT department in any of the hospital regardless private or government hospital and uh, get the doctors, ENT doctors will provide the appropriate treatment and management. And most importantly, if you experience a sudden hearing loss, kindly visit emergency department at any hospital. Do not wait any further. So here comes to our third topics, which is the communication strategies for people with hearing loss. So, 接下来我们会啊更进一步的了解啊一些沟通的技巧. Uh, so, successful communications requires efforts of all people involved in a conversation. Even when the person with hearing loss utilizes hearing aids, and uh, there is some listening strategies involved, it is crucial that everyone or others parties that involved in the communications con consistently use good communication strategies. So right now we are focusing on the tips for people with hearing loss. So first, if you have hearing aids, wear your hearing aids. Secondly, politely inform others how best to talk to you. The easiest way, face-to-face -face communication. Pick a spot that is quiet with good lighting. So avoid this uh, condition with a lot of background noise. This might further uh, compromise the speech quality. So the next one is to talk to the speaker face to face and look for visual cues and gestures. Or you may move closer to the speaker. Pay attention to the one who, are, 
who is talking and concentrate. So uh, kind of you can anticipate yourself in the difficult situations and try to minimize background noise as I mentioned just now and let the one who talks, let the speaker know how he or she is doing, ask them to slow down, ask them to not cover their mouth or chill during the conversation. And of course, it is important also to admit when you do not understand. And in fact, you can ask them to rephrase or repeat on the uh, sentence that you did not, you do not catch. And the last one will be, if you hear better with one ear than the other, then turn the, the side of the better ear to the sound source, to the one who speaks. Then it will uh, better help you with the communication. 所以那么这些沟通的技巧呢也可以让他们知道说就应该要带助听器讲慢一些让你听得好会更加好一些，不然如果你们把另外一边比较差的那一边面向他，当然是听不清楚的。Next will be the tips for communication partner. So 接下来这个呢是啊让讲话的人的一些沟通的技巧，就是一些啊家人呐、朋友啊，要是说啊你们的朋友、你们的家人有这个听力损失。你们要怎么去帮助他们,让他们听得更好一些? So first thing, get the listener's attention before speaking. 最重要的就是你要跟他讲话之前,你叫他,你可以叫他的名字, so say the person's name before beginning our conversation. So this gives the listener a chance to focus uh, their attention and reduce the chance of missing words at the beginning of the conversation. Position yourself. So face the listener directly, move closer on the same level and in good lighting whenever possible. So you should position yourself at the, um, the condition where the light is shining on your face and not in the eyes of the listener. So try to avoid or reduce background noise. Most hearing impaired people have greater difficulty understanding speech when there's background noise. And very important is to speak clearly, slowly, distinctly, but naturally, without shouting or exaggerating the mouth movement. And avoid talking too rapidly or using sentences that are too complex. So you should slow down a little, pause between sentences, and wait to make sure you have been understood before you proceed to the next sentence. And most importantly, do not shout. So actually shouting might distort the sound of the speech and which may make the speech reading more difficult. And 
Also, do not cover your mouth or chew or smoke while talking. And do not talk from another room. Not being able to see each other when talking is a common reason people have difficulty understanding what is being said. And if the hearing impact listener hear better in one ear, try to make a point of remembering which ear is better and you will know how to position yourself best. And use gestures and indicate when changing the topic. So when you want to change a topic, you say, okay, then we are moving to these questions or this uh, uh, condition. So start indicate when you change. And most importantly, be understanding and patient during the conversation. So sometimes it is an effort for you to repeat, to rephrase, but to understand that those with, who have hearing loss, they are also under a situation, a difficult situation where sometimes they are quite em uh, embarrassed of asking, can you repeat? So when they have the uh, courage to ask you repeat, then you as a part of them or, or their family member should also be uh, understanding and um, make a, an effort to help them converse better. Okay. And the last one will be the prevention tips. So of course, we cannot prevent hearing loss. So we cannot prevent aging. As we age, right, we, we cannot stop aging. So this is rather a protection tips. Lah. So, Tim 每况愈下这样子咯 So here are some of the prevention tips. Firstly, is to avoid loud or noisy activities, if possible. If you cannot avoid them, then use the earplug. And limit your time exposure to the noises above 85 decibel, remember. And remember to turn down the volume uh, of the TV or radio and when you listen to the headphones, try to keep it at a moderate level. So some of the smartphones, they actually tend to warn us, they warn us when we are going a bit higher, then the, uh, there is an indication or pop-up will say, oh, you are actually increasing the sound louder than usual. Then you should not go to that level. So when listening to loud sounds like music, concert, take a break from the noise and move away from the louder sound source like fireworks or speakers very loud, then you move away from there. And give your ears some time to recover after being exposed to the loud sound. And do not remember, do not put anything smaller than your elbow in your ear. So actually, we do not encourage ear digging. Don't use cotton bud, bobby pins, keys, paper clips or anything to clear or scratch your ears. It may be comforting, but in another way, it may hurt your ears and may cause further complications like infections. And also keep moving, one of the points. So exercise keeps the blood pumping and including the ears. So this keeps your ear healthy. And most importantly, get your hearing tested, especially if you experience a change in your hearing or ringing or fullness in your ears for over 24 hours. So here comes to the part, to end of the part. And thanks everyone for listening in this talk. Okay, uh, so. Thank you, Ms. Chu, for your insights. Uh, I hope everyone has caught the key takeaways for tonight. So before we proceed to the Q&A, there's a gentle call requesting for your help to put to complete a feedback and your help to help us to continue to provide free webinars to all. Feedback will be conducted in a short poll that you will see in the screen right about now. There are four multiple choice questions. Does everybody see it? So please take 
a minute or two to complete the poll. We'll start the Q&A session right after this. So please don't leave yet. 回馈的环节回答同意或是不同意答案从楚小姐关于这两个问题，这两个问题跟我们很息息相关，是跟钱有关系。所以你们请不要走开哦。All right, uh, the polls are over, so thank you everyone. Uh, don't worry if you haven't finished voting yet. Uh, the feedback form will be displayed automatically on the screen right after this. I will also put the feedback form, uh, in the link, uh, in the chat room right away. So let's get right into the Q&A right now. Uh, gentle reminder, please post your questions to the Zoom chat. Okay, okay, so, the, uh, okay so the first question is, uh, is it, we have one question by Mr. Lee. Uh, is it possible for me to consult uh, Ms. Chu yourself? And how mm -hmm. much is uh, your consultation fee? And could the consultation fee be paid by Medis Medisave? Uh, mm. And could I go for, uh, could I get the consultation fee uh, if it's lower through the polyclinic? Okay, okay well, Chuxiaoti, for uh要来到我们这，因为我们这两这个是一个嗯mobile functional 那么我们都是一样的都会给你做听力测试然后也会给你看你需不需要做听器再做更进一步的解释那么在我们的这个社区服务呢它是有收费的但是这个收费呢也是政府有津贴那么如果你是建国一代 
那么政府就完全津贴那个门诊费 （consultation fee）。那么如果你是立国一代 m a d e g a generation）， 那么政府就津贴一半一些。那么如果没有这个两个啊、呃、优待，你有蓝色的 trust 卡或者橙色的 trust 卡，也是相同的，也是会有一些优待。那么这些收费呢，是因为我们呢是嗯。被政府津贴了，所以会对会跟其他的医院或者跟我们国大医院相比之下呢，也会相对于比较少收费。但是如果同样的听力测试，比如说是在国大医院，可能可以可以用 m e d i s a f e 那么我们这里呢就没有办法用 m e d i s a f e 因为我们还没有那个啊、呃、system。所以，如果在啊、呃，可能 N U H 一个听力测试三四十块，或者三十到五十块是可以用 Medisave 来啊、呃、付。但是我们的呢，如果你是有建国一代卡，就不必还钱。那么或者你有立国一代 m e d i c a l Generation 卡，就需要还五块钱。但是这些都是用通过现金或者 Net Credit 卡，但是是没有办法用 Medisave。嗯，那么。啊、uh, ，你们 ，Can you can you uh say in English? English 啊，呀，嗯，那么如果你们通过 Polyclinic 的话呢，也是相同的 ，Polyclinic 会转你们到医院，或者有一些 Polyclinic， 比如说蔡厝港 Polyclinic 啊、uh, ，嗯 ，Woodlands 还是不给巴豆 Polyclinic 呢，会或者 Clementi Polyclinic 都有在医院呢、啊，或者在那个流动车的。程序全部都是一样的。So let me explain in English. So yes, it is possible to consult our service, but I am from the community audiology, which there is a mobile hearing clinic. We have two mobile buses rowing along, rowing island island wide. So we have one at the west and one at the east. So, uh, in order to come in to see us for the consultation, you need a referral. So it can be through ah、uh, functional screening. Not sure if everyone here ah、uh, notice about this. So this ah、uh, is a big collaboration. Bit is ah、uh, is a project silver screen lah by MOH. So ah、uh, you will go through a screening for the eyes, for the ears, and for oral health. So if you fail your hearing test, then you will be referred to us for the hearing test. Or if you go through polyclinic. Then you will be referred to hospital or some of the polyclinic like Woodlands Polyclinic, Clementi Polyclinic, Queenstown Polyclinic, or Bukit Batok Polyclinic. Then, and、uh, the doctors there、uh, work closely with us. They will refer you to us as well for the hearing test. So for the consultation fee, because we are heavily subsidized by government, so ah、uh, the consultation fee to those are、uh, chargeable. It is not covered. Ah,、uh, and cannot be covered by Medi Safe. So, for example, ah,、uh, in NUH, the a hearing test ah、uh, is charge chargeable at maybe thirty to fifty dollars. This can be covered by Medi Safe in hospital. But for us in the community, we do not have this system, and mainly also it is only already heavily subsidized by the government. So, for pioneer generation. The consultation in our service in our community team is fully subsidized by the government. If for Madeka generation, then it will be five dollars for the hearing aids, fully by cash or nets or credit cards. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so thank thank you, Miss. Thank you, Miss Chu. Uh, for、mm -hmm. the for the uh question for the answers lah.、Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh.、No Because of the uh the lack of time, uh I think we will just take our last question already for the okay. night. Okay. So uh apologies to those who are whose questions that we weren't able to answer tonight as we have very limited time. Lah. So thank thank you all for your understanding. So uh、mm. yeah for Miss uh so Miss Chu for the last question uh、mm. just uh because you have answered mostly on the the price and also on the so um、mm. maybe uh we have a question from the. From the ground, Miss Ah、uh, Miss Ang. So how how does a person relieve the feeling of itchiness if one 
is to use a earbud. Cannot use earbud, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So one thing is we have to find out whether the itchiness is caused by maybe the earwax is moving inside or mm. it is ear infection. So sometimes if you have hard earwax or uh, those not kind of fluid or uh, wet earwax, uh, the earwax might move out. So you might feel a bit of ticklish or uh, mm, something moving inside that you might uh, think it is insect inside. So for mm. this one, right, sometimes I will just ask my patient to just prep the, like massage the ear. But if uh, this action does not relieve the itchiness, then you might have to go to see doctor, which it might indicate maybe there is some infection in the ear. Yeah. So if let's say someone, they say, oh, uh, there's water inside, but water will evaporate. And in fact, our ear, uh, the canal, there is hair, hair inside, which there is auto-cleansing feature. And in fact, we do not need to clear our ears or remove the ear wax. The ear wax is meant for protection. It prevents the insects from going inside. So okay. if you feel yeah, if you feel itchy, then you just rub the outer part, or you may use your finger to just wire inside because anything smaller than the elbow that I mentioned shouldn't be inside the ears because it might cause further complication. So if the itchiness is until that very severe level, then go to the doctor, let the doctor check your ears. Okay.刚才呃，或许我很快的来讲一下朱小姐所讲的，就是刚才有位线上朋友问啊，我的耳朵有痒痒，我不又不可以用那个耳棒，这样怎么办？那朱小姐的回答就是啊，是不可以用的
free counseling just for, for Singaporeans and PRs uh, above 50 years old. Uh, you can also find us, uh, you also can call us to find out more uh, and at 63541191. So we also operate the Seniors Helpline, a national free, uh, a, nas- a toll free national helpline with an easy to uh, easy to remember number at one eight zero zero five 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 five. If you know anyone anyone who needs a listening ear, do get them to call us at the seniors helpline at one eight zero zero five 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 five. 是的，我们非常感谢呃，朱小姐今天为我们的线上转座，呃，乐林辅导中心提供免费的呃辅导服务，然后是给五十岁以上的新加坡公民或是永久居民，这是免费的，让他们能够呃来找我们的辅导员来，无论是在线上或是面对面都能够啊、呃、及早来寻求帮助。当然，我们也有呃热呃热线，就是我们的。乐林援助热线幺八零零五五五五五五，这个号码很容易记哦。若是你有呃你的朋友啊、你的亲人、你的同事需要，真的是来倾诉他们的心声，就可以打这个电话啊、呃、来与我们接洽。So, uh, thank you all once again for joining us tonight. An important update for all our valued listeners, listeners who have been joining our monthly webinars. Uh, we will be transiting to a quarterly webinar instead of a monthly webinar to bring forward more informative talks to you. The next webinar will be held in the month of October on the topic of prevention and early identification of cancer. Do watch up on the on more details on Sage Counseling Center's Facebook. 是的，我们今天晚上呢，其实是我们一系列的每周每个月都有一个讲座，在这里我们要。呃，通知我们的线上朋友，我们将会改成每季，就是每三个月一次的线上讲座。然后，因为我们为的是要能够更好的来，呃，能呃找到一些适合年长者的这些专题。在这里，我们预先预告啊，在十月份，我们将会找一位专家医生来讲如何预防癌症，如何能够做些什么来，好让我们呃大家都。除除了怕三高，其实大家都很怕癌症啊、哦，所以我们要怎么样来去在生活啊等等方面要来调整我们自己。所以你们要知道，到时十月的时候是几时？是我们这个关有关癌症的讲座，请你关注我们的念书，因为我们会在那里啊、呃，让你们知道啊、呃，我们几时有这样的一个讲座。So for more updates on our activities, do follow us on our Facebook page, and at all any other questions, we also are just an email or phone call away. So thank you all once again for joining us, and have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. 是，谢谢大家。若是你们要啊、uh, 来联络乐林辅导中心，欢迎你来电邮，或是打一通电话，或是在脸书。念书就是 Facebook 里面来关注我们，啊，让让你们知道我们更多的啊节目信息。谢谢大家的啊，抽出晚上的时间，我们祝你有一个愉快的晚上。谢谢朱小姐，不客气，好 ，Welcome， 给大家再见哦。Thank、you
Okay, so thank you all uh, very much. We'll be closing the webinar already. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Miss Chu. Bye-bye.